Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Now, if you watch part one of this two-part series, you'll see that I built the dresser carcass. That's all done. Now we need to move on to the drawers. I have these bottom mount drawer slides. And what you need to do when you make drawers and use these drawer slides, you have to follow the instructions of your clearance. Otherwise, you're gonna make the drawers too big or too small, and these won't work at all, and then you'll be screwed. So, what this is telling me is I need a quarter inch clearance from the bottom of the drawer to the carcass opening from where I'm going to put the drawer. I need a five inch clearance from the top of the drawer to the top of the carcass opening and a half an inch clearance on both sides. And that's to allow for the quarter inch thickness of each drawer slide on the bottom of the drawers that's going to make up my width. All right, so what I'm going to do now is measure my opening and then we're going to make the drawers minus these clearance measurements that they give me with the manufacturer specs. Let's get on that. All right, so I figured out my measurements here. If your cabinet is not completely even, if, if you had to make this, like I'm making this custom for someone, they wanted a certain amount of inches wide, certain depth, and it's custom made, so nothing is uh, just a dead even measurement. It's not like, you know, 32 and the middle 16. It, it doesn't work out like that. That's not the measurements they want. So what I did was I measured my opening, and so for, the width of the drawers, I have 31 and 5 sixteenths, but I have to minus half an inch on each side, so that's minus an inch. So that's going to give me 30 and 5 sixteenths wide. That's going to be the width of my drawer. The height is going to be of each drawer on the top here is going to be 7 inch, so two 7 inch high drawers. And then I got to minus a quarter inch for the top gap and then 5 eighths for the bottom gap for the clearance. So I get 6 and an eighth inch high. So the depth is uh, 15 and 3 quarters. I'm going to move the tracks back 3 quarters of an inch because I want 3 quarter drawer front to sit flush with the case. It's not going to be on the outside. It's going to sit inside. So with that in mind, I have to move the tracks back that 3 quarters of an inch so that they're recessed and flush. So I'm going to make the drawers, these are 14 inch slides, I'm going to take a half an inch off so I have some clearance on the drawer slide with the body and the depth of the drawer and I'm going to make that 13 and a half. That might sound a little confusing, but just get a fraction calculator, do your math according to your specs, and you'll be fine. Now we can finally cut all the drawer parts. I set up a stop block on my panel slit so that I can cut everything even. Now, so I'm just going to run a groove in about a half an inch or a quarter inch up from the bottom on all sides of the drawer. This way it can accept the quarter inch hardboard bottom that we're going to do. I'm going to set my combination square to a quarter of an inch and that's going to give me the depth of my groove. Now I'm doing a dry fit with the drawers, so I already put the bottom into the grooves for the back and the sides. What I'll do is put the front up, and if that fits and everything is flush all the way around, then I can remove the back, apply glue, and then screw it in. Okay, since everything is tight and everything fits perfect, we're just going to check square. First I'll check the corners. Now if you cut the bottom too big, that will force the sides in the front out, also the back, and it won't square up in the corners. Now we'll apply some glue, I'll put the clamps on, then I'll diagonally check my measurements to see if they're completely the same, and if they're the same, then I know I'm square, and then I can go ahead and run the screws in. Okay guys, now you've seen me assemble the drawer and we're going to check diagonally for square. 
We have 33 and 3 16 33 and 3 16 So it pays to check and double check and triple check your work as you go along. Okay, now this might look a little confusing down here because I have a bunch of scrap pieces all around, the tracks are in the way. A piece of the maple that I'm going to be using, which is three quarters thick, that's going to be the inset drawer fronts. This is just a cut off, this is not the size of the drawer. I'm gonna use this as a spacer block. And what I mean by that is, I have the tracks here. Now these tracks will get screwed to the wall here, but if I butt them up against the front, then when the drawer closes, it's going to be on the outside of the frame. The customer doesn't want that, they want inset drawers. So, for, in order for me to do that, number one, I took two half inch cutoffs from the, drawer so, uh, the sides of the drawer. These are half inch thick. I'm laying them down on the shelf here. That's gonna give me a spacer block for the side track. I don't want that to be bottomed out on here because then I might have a little hard time getting the drawer in there. It needs some clearance. Uh, if you look in your measurements, it will also give you the clearance, the, you know, the minimum amount of distance you need. You could exceed that if you need to, depending on if you know how to make your drawers correctly. So now I'm going to take the same material that I'm going to be using as the drawer front, three quarters thick. I'm going to butt that up against the front. Now, it doesn't matter if it's going straight across. This is the important part right here. So now what I'm gonna do, line that up. Now once I have that where I want it, I'm gonna take the track, move the track forward, and I'm gonna butt the track up against the back of this. Now I'm gonna take a VIX bit and I'm gonna pre-drill my holes and screw the track in. Then I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. Now we can install this part of the track on the bottom of the drawer. I'm just going to butt that up uh, just about a 64th of an inch right below the front of the drawer. Self-centering bit again. Okay, here's where we're going to install the drawer and see if all the math paid off. So we have our tracks for the rollers. We just go right on top of the tracks that are inside the carcass here. Tilt them. Once they're locked in, push them all the way back. Pull out. Now this is going to be one of the drawer fronts. So we're just going to do a fit. We're going to have about an eighth inch gap on all sides, including the bottom. And that looks like it'll close just nice. Perfectly inset. All right, so we got a few more things to do, a couple more drawers to do, and then we can start attaching the face frames. Okay, so I'm gonna do to set the tracks for the second drawers, take a piece of scrap, three quarter, that's gonna give me the distance that I want. Butt it right up against the front of the carcass here, or the case. And I'm going to put my track on there, and I'm gonna take my Three quarter stock that's going to be used as the same size as the drawer front. I'll put that level with the front of the case. So that's going to give me the spacing that I need. Then I'll butt this up against it. And now what I'll do is take a level, put the level on there, and the bubble's right in the middle so I know that the track is exactly where I need it to be. Well, it's a new day in the shop. I need to get much more done on the drawers for the dresser because I had to install some trim molding for somebody late last night. So what I'm gonna do is bring you over here and show you exactly what I did with the rest of the tracks and then I'm gonna make some more drawers in the same manner I made the first one.
Now I'll just trim up some pieces for the waste molding. Now for the waste molding here around the sides and the strap around the front, I just milled up some pieces of leftover 2x4 and I'm going to put them right along the edge like that with a little glue and some 23 gauge pin nails. Now the client doesn't want drawer pulls. What they want is a nice sweep here, be like a finger grave at the top of the drawer. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I have the top of my drawer, which I do. I marked out, this is 31 and an eighth. So we're going, the center is gonna be 15 and 9 sixteenths. So I marked that out. And then what I'm gonna do is come down from the center, half an inch. That'll be the bottom of my scoop. And now, this is a six inch rule, so I'll put the three, which is right in the center, and I'll go one and a half inches to each side. And that's gonna give me my general sweep for my finger pull. Everything will be centered. Now all I have to do is take a uh, can of paint or a can of stain, come down to my mark, center it. connect everything and cut this out on the bandsaw. Now the way I'm going to attach the drawer fronts is you can see I have the drawer front up here. I'm going to use some double sided tape put on the back of the drawer front. I cut a thin strip as a spacer about an eighth of an inch. Position it where I want it. Then I'm going to take these eighth inch washers now I'm just gonna add two squeeze clamps real quick for a little extra support as I drill through and screw it in Now I just repeated that five more times to get all the drawer fronts in and now I can check the fit. All right, so this is the last gap here. You can see I already filled this with a nice filler strip, matches the drawer fronts. I have another piece here that I made some pocket holes and I'm gonna do the same as I did with that one. Slip it in here like that, cut it to the, the width that I need. Bit of a snug fit, and that's what we want. Butt it right up against there, leave it in place, and I'm gonna have it nice, even border around. Okay, so I got my nice, even reveal here. Looks draws all the way up, each one the same exact spacing all the way around. Got my filler strips in between. Nice and sturdy, drawers pull out with ease, they close with ease, and everything's good. Okay guys, so that wraps up part two of this two-part series. It's going to be a cherry stain with a semi-gloss polyurethane, and that's pretty much you know, the same as I did of the built-in units for this client's closet. And what I'm gonna do is do a little final sanding, and then I'll be done, and then I'll continue on with the finish. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video as much as I did building this project. And make sure you join me next time. Subscribe to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe. And follow me on Instagram. I'll put the link at the bottom of the screen. And I'll see you guys next time in the shop.